They'll kick you to the curb and look damn good while doing it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 kick-ass female TV characters. It's gonna smell like fish for days. For this list, we'll be looking at those characters that kicked all kinds of butt on their respective shows. We've excluded animated characters because that's a list all in itself. Also, we won't be including any superheroes, so apologies to Jessica Jones fans. Your compassion is overwhelming. Finally, the characters have to stand on their feet as individuals and not as part of a team, a la Charlie's Angels. Mm, how do I? With that said, time for these ladies to go to town. Number 10, Detective Kima Griggs, The Wire. What's that? What? What's that my rhyme? You would think working as a Baltimore detective would be tough enough, but this major player in David Simon's gripping drama of drugs, cops, and loyalty ups the ante by having a whole parade of problems in her home life. Issues with her girlfriend lead her down the path of alcohol and infidelity. Do not blame that baby. Do not do it. I'm not blaming anybody. I didn't do this by myself. All the while, she chases down witnesses and quite literally takes bullets for her team. Well respected even among her most hard-headed of colleagues, Detective Greggs is a character who stands for pride on multiple fronts. Kim, if you don't mind me asking, when was it that you first figured you liked women better than men? I mind you asking. Number 9. Dana Scully, The X-Files. FBI! Is anybody in this house? If her partner is the believer, then she's most certainly the skeptic. Do you believe in the existence of extraterrestrials? Logically, I would have to say no. FBI Special Agent Scully, along with her partner Fox Mulder, investigate unsolved cases, some of which edge a little closer to the supernatural than she would like. Mulder! Despite being a dedicated Catholic, it's her absolute faith in science and medicine that makes up who she is, as she is thrilled to let her partner know whenever he leans toward an answer that's a little too far out for her liking. I haven't said anything until now because I haven't been sure, and I'm still not sure. Sure of what exactly? How Kevin was able to be in two places at once, just like St. Ignatius was able to do in the Bible. Throughout the series, that mindset is tested to its limits, making those moments of doubt resonate pretty damn powerfully. That's my problem with it, Mulder. It's all a little too typical. Number 8. Sidney Bristow, alias. I've got bad news for you, man. I am your worst enemy. I've got nothing to lose. Forget Electra. This show proved that Jennifer Garner could play a badass to the 10th degree. He's still having fun, Anna. You'll never beat me. Not only is she a member of the CIA, whose knowledge of language, fighting, weaponry, and stealth would put James Bond to shame, she also serves as a double agent as she infiltrates a crime syndicate, all the while keeping her multiple identities secret from her family. You cannot tell anyone about this. She has the smarts, she's got the skills, and enough facades to keep even the most seasoned spy guessing which side she's on. You took my love and now you're gone. Number 7. Veronica Mars, Veronica Mars. Now, if I were a pipe bomb, where would I be? She may not be a spy, she may not be a police officer, but there's no denying that Veronica Mars is a fighter. Do you have a cell phone? Yeah. Call 911. We need an ambulance, the police, and the fire department. Formerly part of her school's wealthiest and most popular social group, Veronica's life takes a depressing and dramatic shift when her family is torn apart by financial and scandalous issues followed by her being drugged and raped at a party. I never told my dad. I'm not sure what he would have done with that information, but no good would have come of it. Rising from the horrific ordeal to become a private investigator like her father, she's a woman on a mission to expose the truth in whatever dark corner it's hiding in, whether it be class, race, or every inequality in between. Veronica, what are you doing? I'm looking for something. Number six, Sarah Manning, Orphan Black. Don't you just hate those days when you realize you're actually a clone? Sarah Manning finds out the hard way after watching her doppelganger commit suicide right in front of her. After the discovery that she is one of many, she assumes the identity of her fallen clone, and with the aid of some more mirror images, battles against both the company responsible for their creation, as well as a fanatic group that's after their heads. Last time I saw you, you were shackled in the basement. Was I? You've come all this way across the pond. Why not try some local color? She's a rebellious punk caught between the worst that science and religion have to offer. Now we're together. No, we're not. 
You're nothing to me. Just some crazy bitch wearing my t-shirt. Number five, Buffy Summers, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay, first of all, what's with the outfit? Live in the now, okay? You look like DeBarge. Some people seem to struggle when it comes to juggling school and a job. Say hello to Buffy. She spends her days attending high school and slaying the things that go bump in the night. You remember this? I took it from Faith. Stuck it in her gut. The duality of her strange and violent life make her a beautifully relatable and detailed character, with the issues of relationships and growing up being the obstacles that highlight it, often more than the monster hunting. Let me clear this up for you. We're mortal enemies, we don't get timeouts. But make no mistake, we love seeing her stake some vampires while kicking some serious ass. <laughs> Number four, Brienne of Tarth, Game of Thrones. She's not coming with you. She is. In a land where the honorable are slain, the manipulative rule from the shadows, and women are sold like cattle, there is Brienne of Tarth, a warrior of honor who will smash your face in should you cross those she has sworn to serve. I will shield your back and give my life for yours if it comes to that. I swear it by the old gods and the new. While Daenerys and Arya also stand out as kick-ass female characters, they aren't exactly against using some pretty dark tactics in the name of conquest or vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Brienne, though she suffers for it, remains wholeheartedly good and never betrays her ideals. Plus, she beats the ever-loving crap out of the Hound. <laughs> she is not someone you want to mess with. <laughs> Number 3. Carrie Matheson, Homeland. Is your name Carrie Matheson? Last time I checked. The most compelling characters are often the most broken. As part of the CIA's counter-terrorism unit, Carrie directly deals with threats to the United States, one of which may or may not come in the form of an American POW. Hey, I hate to do this right now, but my bosses couldn't insist. We need you to come out to Langley to take a polygraph. Her obsessive nature and will to discover the truth leads her straight into danger, as well as a possible fatal relationship. I'm gonna clear your name, Brody. Carrie, you got me here. That's more than you ever had to do. Throw in a bipolar disorder that makes her prone to episodes, and you have a character who is barely holding her own life together, while the safety of millions lies in her hands. If that's not badass, we don't know what is. No, no, something big is happening, something dangerous. There's no time for rest. Number two, Michonne, The Walking Dead. <laughs> we dare you to find a more kick-ass introduction than this. With her signature katana and cold stare, Michonne quickly rose through the ranks to become one of the most lethal and fearsome zombie survivors on the show. <laughs> Much like the other characters, she's haunted by the walker infestation. And while she's not above lamenting her losses, she's never one to crumble in despair. Her faith in Rick, Mad sword skills and maternal nature make her the ideal companion to have by your side when the dead start to eat the living. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I am Catherine Janeway, captain of the Federation Starship Voyager. I wonder if I might request a sick day. Well, you might have got a headache. Amongst other things. Ladies things. That's why you brought me here, isn't it? To kill me? No, I brought you here to lure them. You know, I just saved this company. I signed the first new business since Lucky Strike left. Number one, Xena, Xena Warrior Princess. What are you doing here? If you wanted to kill me, you'd be dead. What started as a side character destined to die became one of television's most beloved fantasy icons. Stepping out of the shadow of Hercules' The Legendary Journeys, the Sharkrim throwing battle maiden abandoned her initial evil ways and traversed the lands of ancient Greece, kicking the asses of villains and gods alike. I haven't touched the ground yet, Draco. But you have. It's no wonder she has such a cult following, as a strong-willed protector of the weak, along with some less than subtle lesbian subtext. Gabrielle will always be here. She's a standout heroine in her own right, and most definitely the most kick-ass female on TV. Is one woman too much for you? Let me even the odds. <laughs> do you agree with our list? Which female TV character do you think kicks the most amount of ass? I don't know. With new top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo.